Using a repricer in your Amazon business can be the best or the worst thing you can do. Because the problem is that a lot of beginner Amazon sellers fall into the same traps and make the same mistakes when setting up their repricer. Trust me on this one, I've cost myself thousands of dollars on the mistakes that I'm gonna teach you in this video. And I've seen tons of other Amazon sellers do the same thing. So we're gonna jump into my repricer of choice here in just a second. And no matter what repricing software you use, everything that I talk about in this video will be super applicable and make you more profit in your business. So skip ahead a minute or two if you're a pro Amazon seller. But if you're on the beginner side of things, essentially what an Amazon repricer is gonna do is it will monitor the prices of all of the items that you're selling automatically for you. And if you have your repricer set up well, it will automatically adjust prices for you to make as much profit as possible while making as many sales as possible. Because without one of these softwares, you'll have to go in to manually change your prices pretty often. Prices can fluctuate a lot on Amazon, whether it be the price dropped a little bit and you're no longer able to make sales or everyone else wants to raise the price and you're not following suit, you would have then missed out on a bunch of extra profit that you could have made with no extra work. And if you're not sure if you should get an Amazon repricer yet, it typically makes sense for you to go ahead and do it once you've made your first one to $2,000 in sales. The repricer that I recommend for beginners, which is Be Cool, is only $25 a month. So especially if you value your time as a business owner, you'll probably end up spending a couple hours repricing your products in that first month anyway. You might as well pay 25 bucks to save yourself a bunch of time. Don't value your time at $25 an hour. But if you're really trying to stretch your budget, wait until those first sales roll in. If you've got plenty of money to spend, you can't go wrong getting that repricing software right away. So now that we understand a lot of the basics, let's just go ahead and jump into the back end here. Once again, I'm gonna be using Be Cool here today. So if you don't have a repricing software, you can check the link down below. You do get an extended free trial if you go through my link and you might find it useful to follow along with what I'm doing in the video. You can set up the rules for yourself as we go along. Because basically what I wanna show you here is how to set up a basic repricing rule. And I especially wanna break down three major hacks that ended up boosting my Amazon margin. And these hacks are stuff that a lot of people don't typically talk about. So I really wanna put you on some game here, help you squeeze the maximum amount of money out of the tools that you'll probably want to implement anyway. Let's just go ahead and start from the top here. Once you're within your account, you probably want to go ahead and set up this button right here. Go ahead and say add a new rule. And then I'm going to quickly walk you through the important things that you need to look at as you start setting up this rule, right? So let's just talk out the process of making a simple rule for an item that has a buy box. That's going to be items where there is an add to cart button on that listing. And these little profit boosting hacks that I want to break down, we can integrate nicely into this rule for you. So let's go ahead and go on to next next here. And now we're going to look at the competitors, right? So on this listing, we want to make sure that we are competing with the buy box price. This is one of the first and most important things that you should make sure is correct on your repricer. No matter what repricer you're using, make sure you're repricing against the buy box price. Don't reprice against the lowest price because most of the time on Amazon, the lowest price isn't necessarily the one making the sales. It's the buy box price where it has high quality customer service. It's usually an FBA offer. So it's being shipped from Amazon's warehouse. And so so in this case, we just want to go ahead and opt into Amazon FBA and then non-featured FBA being competitors. If you plan on applying a rule like this to any items that are FBM, so items that you're going to be shipping directly to the customers themselves, you might want to go ahead and opt that in there. I like having this rule that I'm going to break down here for you guys set up and then an exact clone of this rule with FBM offers turned on as a secondary option. And this is the one I'd recommend using for all of your FBA offers. And that's where we get into another margin boosting hack with repricers is that if you're only competing with FBA buy box owners, a lot of times on listings, you'll see that the buy box can fluctuate a couple dollars where it might give an FBM seller the buy box at 25 bucks, but it's giving FBA sellers consistent buy box at $28, right? And just because FBA is able to get it to the customer with that two day prime shipping, great customer service, you're able to charge a premium. So there's no reason to set up your repricing rule for you to make less profit than you should be in the first place. You guys also feel free to pause this video as we go through. If you don't have this set up already, you can go ahead and just copy a lot of the rules that I have set up here. The important ones, I will go ahead and point out to you guys though. In this repricing rule here, for example, I like excluding sellers with either zero feedback or really poor feedback. You tend to get a little bit more buy box once you do have that first feedback as an Amazon seller. If you don't have that yet, it's okay. You can still win the buy box. And I know a lot of you guys are like that where you don't have any seller feedback. So prove me wrong, beat me on the buy box on some of these listings because I'm not even looking at you as competition on some of these products. Another really important one here is to exclude sellers who have back ordered products. 
product. Basically what this means is if that item's not fully in stock at FBA yet, we're gonna have a much faster shipping time than this seller who is backordered, where it's still on the way to Amazon's warehouse. We don't need to compete with them. We can charge a higher price because we have a faster shipping time. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step in the process here. And this is where we get into probably the most important thing that I can mention for boosting your margins using a repricer, which is this option right here. So basically what this is doing right here is we're telling the repricer, hey, when the buy box price on a listing is above the minimum price that I've set, just match the existing buy box price. For whatever reason, a lot of repricers default this doing minus one penny against that buy box price. This is what causes a ton of price tanking on Amazon. If you've heard that phrase before, it's people just barely undercutting each other. And the crazy part about this is that if you're one cent cheaper than somebody else, there's almost no correlation with making more sales than that seller who's one penny more expensive than you. And a lot of times if they have their stuff set up correctly, they're probably going to match your price. You're automatically going to lower your price below them. And so you're just going to cause a price war where the price drops rapidly over time. And you don't even end up making more sales because if you want to make more sales by being a cheaper offer, undercut by 50 cents or $1.50, undercut by something that you wouldn't expect them to follow you down to. And if you undercut by a significant number, you will end up making more sales. So whether you want to just sell out on something, it didn't do as well for you as you hope. There's going to be plenty of cases where you do need to lower prices on Amazon, but never ever lower your prices by one penny under your competition. It doesn't accomplish anything beyond lowering margins for everybody. And the way that this works as you're setting up your repricing rules, where it's asking us between the minimum and maximum price, when you send an item in, you'll want to go ahead and set up an individual rule on each product. For example, there are some items that we sold way back in the day. And basically what I do is I set a minimum price that I want the repricer to set that product at. And I also set the maximum price that I want the repricer to be thinking about charging. And then I can also go ahead and select the rule. In this case, it's that rule based buy box rule that we're working on setting up right now. And then you'll repeat that process for any items that you want to sell. And once you've selected those parameters, you'll just go ahead and press this play button right here that starts repricing that item. And then it'll start automatically changing the prices according to this rule right here that we've set up. So in this example, this repricing rule is going to start changing our price of the item to match the buy box price as long as the current buy box is above our minimum. So that way you can set minimums to make sure that you actually charge the prices that you want to make. You're not just letting your repricer run wild and run the price down to $1 on something you paid 20 bucks for. You'll set those existing parameters. And then this is basically how it behaves within those parameters, right? I also have more full videos on the channel showing you how to specifically set up all these repricing rules. I want to really narrow in on how to use these repricers to raise your margins today. So I'm not going to talk about every single setting. If you want that video is on my channel as well. Just know that there is a reason for a lot of these settings here. Again, you can pause it, copy the settings, that kind of thing. Another thing I want to specifically point out that is important to set, a lot of people don't give a lot of thought to the maximum price that they want to charge on their items, but it is really important. If you ever end up being the only seller left on an item, this rule is going to kick in where you're the only seller, set it to my maximum price. And a lot of people, they'll just go in and they'll say that their maximum price is $1,000. But if you are doing that, especially on an item where there's only a couple sellers, you think you might be the only seller left, look back on the seller ramp charts and see what the highest price ever that item actually sold for was and set that as your max price. Don't just click a random number because eventually it might kick in and you might make a super duper profitable sale just because you spent an extra second while you were figuring out a really good minimum price, go in and set a good maximum price as well. Another thing you can set up if you're a little bit scared to use repricers and all that kind of stuff is you can set a price change safety net. If you're really scared that a repricer is going to demolish your margin, that kind of thing, you can set a maximum for how much the repricer is actually going to let the price change by. Hey, I don't want to repricer to lower my price by more than 50% or whatever it is, right? You can be a little bit more conservative with it. And if you want to use that to guard your margins, then by all means do it. Another thing that you might find valuable for protecting margins as well is these advanced settings right down here. So if you wanted to opt in FBM competitors and you're still concerned that you don't want to charge the same price as them, again, we talked about the fact that you're going to be able to charge a premium over those FBM sellers. You could go in here and say buy box price. When my listing is FBA and my competitors FBM, it make my price 1% higher or 5% higher or whatever it is, right? There is definitely a use case there and that could be really cool to play around with. There's also when you're competing against Amazon, maybe you want to undercut Amazon just ever so slightly so that you can actually make sales since they tend to hog a lot of the sales on listings, right? Play around with a lot of this stuff. Those are just a couple use cases that come to mind, but let's go on to the next step of the process. And I still have another major hack that I'm going to break down for you guys. That is probably the number one biggest margin booster in my business. But on this tab here, this is basically just deciding what we want to do when we are actually owning owning the buy box, you can change this rule to get super aggressive. Like when you own the buy box, raise my buy box price by 10 cents or 25 cents. And that can be a really good idea on items that sell super fast where there's plenty of different sellers for the sales to rotate between. If you want to start charging 25 cents,
cents more and see if people start following you. I think that's a really great idea. I tend to just leave the prices where they are. I tend to just let the repricer raise my prices up to match the competition if the opportunity is there for me to get some profit. And like I was saying, this next hack that I'm going to break down is probably the number one way that I'm able to drag prices up anyway. So let's go on to this next step. And this is where we get into some seriously awesome information that I want to drop for you guys. Please set this up. There's no reason not to. Basically, what I do on all my repricing rules is go ahead and set up an automated time where the price just shoots up, right? So for example, on my repricing rule, every morning at 2 a.m. where there's not a lot of people shopping anyway, you shouldn't be making that many sales. It's okay if you make less sales at 2 a.m., right? Every day from 2 to 4 a.m., my prices go up automatically by 10% on pretty much every listing. And the logic behind that is let's say you have an item that you're selling for $20, right? If I have a couple other competitors and my repricer sends my price to $22, their repricers are probably going to say, hey, if their repricers look at my price and say, wait, all the other competition, they're at $22 now. Let me follow them up to $22. This automated way of raising prices can also automatically raise other people's prices, even if they aren't scheduled to be raising prices and stuff. And honestly, the more Amazon sellers do this, the better it's going to be for us as sellers, because especially on listings that only have a few sellers, there's going to be a really good shot that when you raise your price, that one competitor who's down here is the only guy who's cheap. They're going to follow your price up. And then everybody is more profitable starting again at 4 a.m. And then so what if the price needs to drop a little bit by a couple pennies? We already bought ourselves an extra 10% in revenue just by simply raising our prices in the middle of the night. And so then once we complete that schedule there, that's going to take us to the last step of the process. This is a completed repricing rule. So if you've been following along, you can go ahead and just start setting that up on all of your Amazon listings. You'll just go back over to the manage listings tab, start setting those minimum maximum prices and select that rule based buy box rule that we just built. But hopefully you picked up some gems that helps boost your margin and avoid all the price tanking that can happen when you do use a repricing software. You've got everything nice and set up for you now. And again, if you do want to go ahead and get started using Be Cool, the link is down below for you to get an extended free trial there. And while you're down there, also please go hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. That kind of stuff helps me out. It's completely free for you guys to do and helps me out massively for adding some value, adding some extra margin to your Amazon business. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down below as well. I'm always super happy to answer those. And since you're here, I'm also going to assume you're interested in finding profitable products to sell on Amazon faster. Go ahead and watch this video right here. It breaks down my favorite strategies for finding profitable products as soon as possible.